Hello. I'd like to comment about figure 12 on page 84. Figure 12, page 84 on meeting humor. And I'd like to do it in two ways. Number one, first look at the use of iPhones or smartphones and, uh, or iPads and laptops during meetings. Meeting multitasking. And number two, a comment one of my favorite direct reports made at the end of each meeting. Harold's comment of what a meeting was all about. To the first point on the use of smartphones and iPads and laptops, it really, during a meeting, uh, unless everybody else is going through data, it's really clear that you're multitasking, and your multitasking is looking at email. <laughs> Now, some of my colleagues on campus think that students multitasking on their laptops as they're looking at their Facebook. But at work, you're, you're going through your email. And I just don't think that's acceptable in a business environment. Number one, uh, while you're multitasking, it is a clear scientifically <laughs> held fact that you are not focused totally on one item. And number two, I just think it's rude. I remember helping one of my buddies in Shell prepare for his presentation uh, before a senior leadership team meeting at our manufacturing site in Lafayette, uh, Louisiana. And he really put a lot of effort into it. I know that because I was there helping him out. And during the meeting, I looked around and almost everybody was on their laptop or down, you know, serotipously looking at their uh, BlackBerry. And they're not Googling, they're checking their email. Uh, not too good. Secondly, I have to say, though, last week we had a meeting and we were interviewing a potential professor here at the university. And he was using a term I was unfamiliar with, the global project. And always when somebody says, well, you may be familiar with the global project, and if you don't, if you have never heard of it, you, ooh, ouch. So I immediately Googled it. So there may be exceptions uh, to the rule I just laid out. Now, to the second point about my friend Harold's comments. At the end of any meeting, Harold would say to me, Skip, now it's time to get back to work. And I would say, Harold, this is work. So let me make about uh, A, B, C, D, E points about business meetings. Frankly, many decisions are made through conversations, corridor discussions, uh, coffee room meetings, the water cooler meeting, before a meeting's even held. Secondly, I think meetings have to have an agenda, and that that agenda should be distributed uh, in advance. I think that's the point that was made in the textbook in Chapter 3, Figure 16. Chapter 3, Figure 16. A buddy tells me a story, however, of one experience he had when he went into a meeting and the chairperson said, does anyone have any items for the agenda? No. Meeting adjourned. What a waste. I lean toward regularly scheduled meetings on a calendar, say MS Outlook. Why? That means that everyone can build around your meeting time their meetings so that you aren't just excluded uh, helter-skelter. One role, of course, is the moderator or the chair of a meeting. But I think a second role ought to be a timekeeper. And that timekeeper role should not be the chairperson because he or she is too involved in the conversation. And so much is going through your mind to make sure everybody's had a chance to speak. If somebody hasn't said anything, to remember to say, Joe, you haven't commented, what's your opinion? That kind of stuff. And finally, I think there ought to be uh, a note taker. Why? Believe it or not, people will not remember what happened at the meeting a week later. So it is a historical artifact to hold people accountable, because I think, to build on this, every meeting has to have 
uh, an action item ending. Who does what by when? Who does what by when? The action items. And I think every meeting should open with a report out on the action items. Who was to do what? And has it been completed yet? And yes, folk need to be held accountable on time in full. OTIF. It's a manufacturing term that I think applies to meetings and the commitments you make to others. Because that's what trust is based about on. You're doing what you say you'll do. I hope you're enjoying the book. I hope you're learning. I am. I'm learning quite a bit from y'all in the discussion board and from your uh, slides. Thanks.